today we will start with the uh, uh, gustation which is uh, the uh, sensation of taste Uh, since uh, physiology is all about uh, function, so we will focus on the main functions of uh, the sensation of taste. Taste is a relative group that uh, serves primarily as a gatekeeper to the gastrointestinal tract. In addition, it is uh, used to separate undesirable foods from the pleasant ones. Another important function of gustation is to avoid lethal foods. And now the question is that how do we acquire the taste fully? Uh, the answer is that it is uh, mainly a function of uh, taste buds. Factually speaking, taste is a cumulative sense, but one's sense of smell also contributes strongly to the taste perception. Then the uh, texture of food is uh, detected by uh, textual senses of mouth and uh, presence of substances in food that uh, stimulate the pain endings uh, such as pepper greatly alter the taste experience. Now I am going to tell you the role of uh, taste buds which are avoid bodies with a diameter of uh, 50 to 70 microns. In adults about uh, 3000 to 10,000 taste buds are present while the number is more in children but in old age many taste buds they degenerate and the sensitivity of taste becomes weak and now exploring other species we have uh, come to know that uh, the insects they have taste organs in their feet um, and in their uh, <clears throat> antenna and uh, even in their mouth parts A taste bud, which is a, a functional unit of uh, taste sensation, is composed of uh, the receptor cells and uh, the sustentacular cells. Uh, these receptor cells, they are uh, uh, modified epithelial cells and they are about uh, 50 in number. There are only few uh, sustentacular cells which are supporting in nature and then many sensory nerve fibers they are intertwined among the cell bodies. Now let's have a look at the uh, physiologic structure of uh, taste buds. Taste bud is uh, basically a bundle of uh, taste receptor cells whose uh, supporting cells are embedded in the covering of uh, papillae. Categorically, uh, cells of a taste bud, they are divided into four groups, type 1, 2, 3 and type 4. Now, uh, type 1 and uh, type 4, they are the supporting basal cells, while type 1, 2 and 3, they have uh, projections which are called microvilli. These uh, microvilli, they project into an opening in the epithelium covering the tongue, while the neck of each cell is attached to the neck of others. Mm, it is noteworthy that uh, there are tight junctions between epithelial cells and the neck portion of type 1, 2 and 3 cells so that only the tip of these cells they are exposed to any fluid in the oral cavity. Uh, 
then the cells of uh, taste buds they undergo constant cycle of uh, growth apoptosis and a regeneration but why this regeneration is required a uh, reason is most receptors are carefully sheltered from the direct exposure to the environment but the taste receptor cells by virtue of their task frequently they come into contact with the potent chemicals so they have to be replaced continuously now during this process the epithelial cells surrounding the taste bud they differentiate first into the supporting cells and then into the uh, receptor cells Uh, I already mentioned about the taste pore which is uh, formed by the apical surfaces of taste cells and uh, taste hair protrude from this pore and that's how a uh, surface for taste and molecules is provided by a taste hair or a microvillus Now, taste bud, which are uh, smaller and closer to the tip of the tongue and uh, larger toward the back, they are found in relation to tongue papillae. There are uh, four types of papillae: fungiform, circumvallate, foliate, and uh, filiform. Filiform papillae are small and uh, conical-shaped papillae. Um, the interesting thing is that they are situated over the dorsum of the tongue, but they have no taste buds. Fungi form papillae are located on the anterior two third of tongue, and uh, these are round in shape. And the number of taste buds in each uh, is moderate, which is up to uh, ten. Then come uh, circumvallate papillae. Which form a V shape on the posterior one third of tongue. These are large structures, and each uh, papilla contains many taste buds, up to hundred. As far as the foliate papillae are concerned, they are located along uh, lateral margins of tongue. Now there are some other locations also for the presence of uh, a few taste buds, and these are palate, pharynx, tonsils, epiglottis, and uh, proximal esophagus. Now there are five primary taste sensations, which are sour, salty, sweet, umami, bitter. And uh, now we will discuss each one one by one. Sour taste is caused by uh, acidic substances, for which the receptor involved is called uh, epithelial sodium channel. Although the uh, proton which enters the receptor that is uh, hydrogen ion. There is another channel involved, and uh, that is the uh, nucleotide gated K-tyn channel. Now, the intensity of sour taste is approximately proportional to the logarithm of uh, hydrogen ion concentration, which means the more acidic the food is, the stronger the sour sensation will be. For a uh, salty taste, the receptor involved is again a uh, epithelial sodium channel, and uh, the cations involved are of uh, ionized salts, mainly by uh, sodium ion concentration. Uh, then the anions they also contribute to a lesser extent. Quality of uh, salty taste varies from one salt. to another because some salts they elicit other taste sensations also in addition to the uh, saltiness 
sweet taste is uh, not only caused by a single class of chemicals. Now, uh, some of the type of chemicals that uh, cause this taste include uh, sugars, uh, glycols, alcohols, aldehydes, uh, ketones, amides, esters, some uh, amino acids, uh, and uh, some small uh, proteins. Uh, then there are uh, sulfonic acids and uh, the halogenated acids. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, most of the substances that cause a sweet taste, they are organic chemicals. While the inorganic substances which produce uh, sweet taste are lead and uh, beryllium. Now here is a twist, like uh, slight changes in uh, chemical structures such as um, addition of a simple radical, it can often change the substance from sweet to bitter. Hmm. Umami taste uh, designates a pleasant taste sensation. Umami is a Japanese word meaning uh, delicious. It is a quanti uh, qualitatively different sensation from sour, salty, sweet or bitter. And it uh, serves as a marker for a desirable and uh, nutritionally protein rich food. This taste is uh, triggered by the presence of uh, amino acids, especially uh, L-glutamate, for example, meat extract or aging cheese. Receptor for this taste is uh, metabotropic, whose activation is uh, intensified by guanosine and uh, inosine monophosphate. Now bitter taste is uh, also not caused by only a single type of chemical agent and uh, substances that give uh, bitter taste are almost entirely organic substances. There are uh, two particular uh, classes of uh, substances which cause bitter taste and these are um, alkaloids and uh, long chain uh, nitrogen containing items. Examples of these substances are uh, quinine, caffeine, strychnine, nicotine. Interestingly, there are many plants, fungi and some animals which produce bitter toxins as a natural defense mechanism. As far as uh, the detectors are the topic of interest, uh, you must know that uh, most bitter tastants, they are detected by G protein coupled receptors. Now, uh, taste cells that uh, detect bitter uh, possess around uh, 50 to 100 bitter receptors. Each of these receptors, they respond to a different flavor of uh, bitter. Uh, since uh, each cell has a diverse family of receptors, a wide variety of uh, unrelated chemicals all could taste bitter despite their diverse structures. And hence this mechanism, it expands the ability of a receptor to detect a wide range of uh, uh, potentially harmful chemicals. Okay, now... Uh, Now I'm going to give you important examples of some common bitter substances. One of them is the uh, quinine, which uh, originally is bitter tasting toxin with the uh, antimalarial properties. And uh, it is extracted from a tree bark. For eliciting the taste, it can block uh, uh, most classes of potassium channels and uh, cause non-specific membrane depolarization. 
then uh, there are some substances which uh, uh, initially taste sweet but uh, have a bitter aftertaste for example there is a saccharine but this characteristic makes the substance objectionable to some people you must have experienced that there are other taste like sensations for example uh, taste of uh, fat constitute a sixth basic taste but its uh, transduction mechanisms they are not fully delineated now can you think of uh, any other taste like sensation which actually are not taste well there are these uh, chemical sensations that mimic hot or cold for example the uh, burning sensation associated with chili pepper and uh, then there is uh, menthol that these are not tastes but since they are mediated by the somatosensory pathways located in the oral cavity and nasal passage they are considered taste sensations just to regain your attention i will include another taste like sensation and uh, it is the uh, fizzy sensation on your tongue from uh, carbonated drinks this is not caused by the tiny bubbles popping the fizz this is the actual taste of uh, carbon dioxide the type of uh, receptor protein and its uh, specific action in each taste villus determines the type of taste that will be perceived now i give you few examples for uh, uh, sodium and hydrogen ions this open uh, specific ion channels in uh, apical membranes of taste cells and uh, for sweet and bitter taste <clears throat> portion of a uh, receptor protein that uh, protrude through apical membrane activates uh, second messenger transmitter substances which result in intracellular chemical changes eliciting the taste signal uh well i feel that you still have a question that how the difference in the taste is appreciated you see each taste bud typically responds to only one of the five primary taste substances except when an item is present in very high concentration this discrimination is uh, coded by patterns of activity in various taste bud receptors so we can say that each uh, receptor cell responds in varying degrees to all the primary tastes but in generally preferentially responsive to one of the taste modalities that's how the uh, discrimination depends on uh, several differences in the stimulation patterns of all taste buds and uh, here are uh, 13 taste receptors now uh, we are going to move on to uh, the taste transduction uh, which is a process in which uh, taste chemoreceptors convert the chemical energy into action potentials in taste nerve fiber if i uh, put it in few words what happens that uh, dissolved substances act on exposed microvilli which are also called taste here or cilia and this leads to the development of uh, receptor potential and ultimately to the generation of uh, action potential hmm. now uh, how the receptor potential is uh, initiated like uh, most sensory receptor cells membrane of uh, taste cell is negatively charged on inside and uh, application of taste substances cause partial loss of the uh, negative potential now this decrease in <clears throat> potential 
is uh, approximately proportional to the logarithm of uh, the concentration of stimulating substance while the change in the electric potential that is called uh, receptor potential now let's revise how the receptor potential is uh, generated you see there is application of a substance to be tested which results in a depolarization of the receptor cell by opening ion specific uh, channels and there is a response in the associated nerve fibers these are uh, just uh, thresholds for different tastes now uh, we will have a look at the mechanism of uh, receptor stimulation for different taste sensations in case of uh, sour what happens is that uh, there is a presence of uh, free hydrogen ions in acid this hydrogen ion blocks the potassium ion channel and results in decrease in the passive movement of potassium out of the cell and that's how a reduction in internal negativity occurs while well, a uh, presence of salt leads to the entry of positively charged sodium ion through specialized channels and uh, resulting in receptor depolarization uh, in case of uh, sweet taste presence of glucose leads to the activation of uh, cyclic amp second messenger pathway which results in uh, uh, phosphorylation and a blockage of the uh, potassium channels now the bitter taste tent it causes the activation of g protein and phospholipase c messenger system and results in calcium release <sighs> now let's have a look that how the taste nerve is uh, excited you must know that uh, um, taste nerve fibers they form a branching terminal network uh, this network is uh, <clears throat> interwoven around the bodies of taste cells while some of these fibers they invaginate into the folds of taste cell membrane <clears throat> now in the next step uh, many neurotransmitter vesicles they form beneath the cell membrane near the fibers and uh, the release of the neurotransmitter substance excites the nerve fiber endings now here we mustn't forget about the adaptation of uh, uh, taste sensation which is achieved by a strong immediate signal in the taste nerve and a weaker continuous signal later on. It means that uh, on first application of the taste stimulus, the rate of discharge of nerve fibers rises to a peak in a small fraction of a second. But then adaptation occurs within a few seconds. As a result of which the rate of discharge of impulses falls back to a lower steady level. But keep in mind, this taste adaptation occurs both at receptors and at the CNS level. Well, let's start with the uh, transmission of the signals into uh, CNS. First order neurons of taste pathway, they are in the nuclei of uh, three different cranial nerves. While the dendrites of these neurons, they are distributed to the taste buds. So um, from the anterior to third of the tongue, these signals they travel in the branches of trigeminal nerve. And uh, then they join the cauda tympani, which is the branch of the facial nerve. And from the posterior one third of tongue, 
the signals they are carried by the fibers in the glossopharyngeal nerve uh, from epiglottis and from other areas the signals they are carried within the branches of uh, vagus nerve Now these efferent signals uh, through the axons of first order neurons enter into the nucleus of uh, tractus solitarius which is located in the brain stem precisely in the uh, medulla oblongata through the solitary tract. It means uh, that the neurons of tractus solitarius they are second order neurons. Exons of uh, these, they run through the uh, medial lemniscus. Uh, next, the third order neurons, they are in the uh, postventral nucleus of thalamus. Uh, so, the exons, they pass uh, rostrally to the ventromedial nucleus of thalamus. And then the exons from the third order neuron, they project into the uh, parietal lobe. And that's how the signals, they finally reach the cerebral cortex. Final uh, taste perception is achieved in uh, the ventral region of postcentral gyrus, which curls into lateral fissure of the cerebral cortex. Um, in other words, you can say that uh, the taste center that is located in the opercular insular cortex, which means in lower part of the postcentral gyrus, which receives cutaneous sensations from the face also. Now, there is a unique feature of our gustatory pathway uh, that is uh, unlike most sensory input gustatory pathways they are primarily uncrossed and that will mean the taste fibers they do not have an independent cortical projection pathway for uh, salivation which is a taste reflex it is relatively uh, simple because the fibers here they course from uh, the solitary tract directly to the superior and inferior salivatory nuclei and uh, activation of uh, saliva secretion that is mediated by uh, preganglionic parasympathetic fibers to superior inferior salivatory nuclei and then uh, postganglionic fibers to submandibular, sublingual and parotid glands. On average, uh, 30 ounces of saliva is secreted every 24 hours, but any form of sympathetic activation, it can cause dry mouth. Taste preference uh, uh, simply means that an animal will choose certain type of foods over others and uh, the preference it uh, often change in accord with the body's need for certain specific substances now note that uh, the phenomenon of taste preference or taste aversion it results from a mechanism located in central nervous system not in the taste receptors these are uh, the abnormalities of uh, taste sensation and uh, we will discuss uh, each of them one by one. Adrosia is a total loss of taste. It may be permanent or temporary. Lesion in a facial nerve, cordotemporae or Mandibular division of trigeminal nerve causes the loss of taste in anterior two-third of tongue while lesion in a glossopharyngeal nerve leads to loss of taste in the posterior one-third of tongue. Temporary agusia occurs due to certain drugs such as uh, captopril, uh, penicillamine or the substances containing uh, sulfhydryl group. 
uh, Ejuzi is uh, um, uncommon, except in patients with the uh, Sjogren syndrome. These patients they suffer from an autoimmune disease that impairs the exocrine gland function, including the salivary glands. And you all know that uh, saliva is required to carry the taste ends and dissolve form through the taste bud pore. Next is a uh, hypogeusia. Uh, which is uh, a decrease in the taste sensation and it is uh, uh, due to uh, increase in the threshold for different taste sensations. Then there is a metallic dysusia uh, which is uh, actually a persistent metallic taste and it is considered a common side effect of uh, antifungals and uh, many antibiotics such as uh, tetracyclines and uh, metronidazole. Uh, then comes the taste blindness which is a rare genetic disorder where there is an um, inability to recognize the substances by taste. Finally, there is a uh, dysusia, which is uh, a disturbance in uh, taste sensation, in which uh, paroxysmal, unpleasant hallucinations of taste and smell occur. Condition in which uh, dysusia present is the uh, temporal lobe syndrome, especially when interior region of temporal lobe is affected. So uh, that was all regarding gustation and uh, that's the end of special senses physiology as well. So good luck memorizing it.